Welcome back to Lost Together Forever, More Settled Diaries. In this, uh, in today's episode, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to adjust my valves on my 2021 Continental GT650. The procedure for uh, checking the valves and adjusting the valves on my bike is exactly the same for the, uh, the Interceptor or the Continental GT. Basically, uh, first things first, what we have to do is remove the seat, remove the tank, uh, and then that will give us access to the valve cover, remove the valve cover, expose the valves, and then we'll adjust the valves. So firstly, uh, let's get started. Okay, so 10 millimeter back of the tank. Tank lifts up. So, pulled the tank back a bit and I've lifted it up in order to get at these quick disconnect lines. There's one. This is one from the front. The other one is actually down there. It's a bit of an angle to get to, but there. Let's pop that one, and then there's the green line right here. Done. That's all of the six connections. Take it straight off. Now what we're going to do is loosen these three bolts and lift the ABS pump up and support it just so that it gives us a bit more room underneath the uh, underneath the uh, frame where the frame and the valve cover meet. That is a four millimeter. Alan. So, you gotta pry the pump up a bit, or the carrier for the pump. See, all we can do is really is get it up a bit and then wedge something underneath it. Alright, so I'm just gonna use some cardboard, rolled up. All we're doing is, one thing I will say, I'm, I'm trying to do this without removing the valve cover gasket. So I know uh, a lot of videos, a lot of guys remove the gasket and then have to reattach it. I'm hoping that the gasket just comes off and uh, doesn't have any issues. Uh, eight millimeter bolts for the valve cover and uh, then a and the socket, or sorry, the uh, spark plug, five eighths. Okay. Here's the spark plug. Looks healthy. No issues. Same, same. Looks good. Valve covers. Just tuck your plug wires up so they're out of the way. One thing that uh, uh, was suggested was to make sure that you keep these bolts in the same order as they come out. As you can see it's a shoulder bolt so what you do to go to tighten it, you don't want to tighten it too much because I have uh, heard of incidents of people snapping them off, so be very gentle when you are reinstalling, but I'll go over that as I reinstall, but the threads on this one look good. I'm just going to set it in the valve cover for now. 
before I take them all out. I'm going to, right after this, I'm going to take the two horns and undo them and then just move them forward. Okay, so the horns are a 12 and a 12. 12 nut and rear. That's up as vacuum line there. That's up as far as it can go. So now let's see if we can get this valve cover there. It pops up no problem. Right in here, the half moon is what I'm trying to leave in. So I'm just going to try and pick the gasket out as I go along. I'll go to the other side and I'll try and do the same and then see if we can work that cover off without Cover is free of the gasket. There's a, uh, looks to me like a, a PCV valve. Rubber hose, I'm going to pull this guy, disconnect it from the air box here. And I'm going to just pull this. off the air box there so I'm gonna just snake this guy down and see if that's I'm assuming that's gonna give us a little more free room up top so Didn't mess that up, left the gasket. Now in order to rotate the engine, you have to use a 17 mil socket. Firstly, you have to remove this cover down here, uh, which is a uh, 14 mil Allen. So I'm just going to intact with this so don't uh, don't forget about that oh, you see there's where your uh, end of your crank is and that's where we attach the 17 mil uh, socket to spin the uh, engine Spin the engine, turns the camshaft, valves open and close, there's the exhaust valve, closing, intake opening. As you can see here, there is markings on the end of the camshaft, they have Is a should have L. So now when that L line is even with the um, joint, that means your engine is at top dead center for the left hand side cylinder. The next line you'll see come up right there is an R, so that means 
when that line is parallel to the line here, that means your right hand cylinder is at top dead center. So we'll just go through this again. The line is now even. So the left hand cylinder is at top dead center. Now we can check our intake and our exhaust valves on top dead center. All right, so the exhaust, sorry, the, uh, the specs on for this uh, infield is uh, 0 0.08 millimeter for intake and 0.18 millimeter uh, for exhaust, or uh, in standard, it's a 0 0.003 of an inch for the intake and 0 0.007 for the exhaust. So we've got uh, our feeler gauge here for the intake, so So as you put it in, I'm not sure if you can hear this or not. There's just a bit of friction, so this this valve is correct. It's not loose. Oh, this one at the back here. Is there the inside one? Of course, it has to be the inside one. It is snug. Our 10 mil, 10 millimeter, about a quarter of a turn just to loosen off the lock nut a bit. And then we'll see if this guy's gonna fit. No, that's a bit too loose. So. Basically, you've got to sort of do a, a little adjusting, a little checking out, and your adjustments are only going to be like an eighth of a turn. So I've adjusted that a touch, and again, you can hear that, you can feel it in the feeler gauge. So I'm going to keep that right there. And now tighten this up. Brass or copper, lock that up snugly. Measure it again. Let's see how it is. You can hear that. You can just feel it. So we'll go through. This side again. We'll just okay. Same, same. Okay, so that's the two intakes on the left side. Now I'll check the exhaust. Okay, so the exhaust, uh, 007, 0.178 is this one, but it's, it's close enough to 0.18. Yeah, let's see. It's not bad. Maybe a little. A little snug, but not bad. And this one is. Get the same there a bit. It's a bit, a bit snug. I'm going to loosen it off just a bit so we get consistent movement between both sides. Again, it has to be the inside one, of course. But it's a fairly, relatively easy job, honestly. I may get some comments, I'm sure, from people saying, well, I wouldn't have adjusted them all, but you know, peace of mind counts for a lot in these bikes. Oh, okay, that one feels a little, that's better like that. And it's just only maybe an eighth of a turn, is that? So let's just 
hold that there. <sighs> Give it a suck. Snug up. I'm going to get the left hand side back to top dead center again and remeasure the belts just because this way they've gone through one turn. Now we'll rotate the engine again and do the right side. That's the R. Now you got top dead center right there. Okay. Oops. It's just a, a go by sort of feel uh, with the feeler gauge. If you, I think, stay consistent with your valve adjustment, then I think you should be good. Yeah, let's see that feels. side again. So yeah, I'm going to rotate the engine once more and then we'll check it again. Good. Be careful as well when you're measuring because if you, if you twist the feeler gauge just a bit, you'll get more resistance than you probably want. So make sure it's level with the, uh, the face of the tablets. Okay. All right. So there you have it, that's our exhaust, sorry, intake and exhaust valve adjustment. Now we're going to try and put the valve cover back on without messing anything up and not having to use any sealant. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put just a little dab of grease and in the gasket channel just to have to hold the gasket as I slip the gasket in this way hopefully it won't uh, drop out and I suppose you could have just used sealant but I really didn't want to remove the gasket if I didn't have to not necessary to do a ton of grease everywhere but just a bit it'll just melt out of course and uh, be consumed by the engine okay so what I'm gonna do is just put a dab of grease along the mating surface of the gasket just to stick the gasket and prevent it from moving around when we go to drop it in. Put a little bit there, there, to the other side. This side has these little tabs see here 
that um, guide the gasket or hold the gasket there, so that's handy. It's too bad there wasn't tabs like that along the back side because it seems a little stubborn. With any luck, we could just drop it right off. Alright. So, once again, in from the right hand side seems to be we had to do was still leaving the gasket in place we uh, started at the back and I had to recruit my camera girl to assist me so one of the one of us on each side and we were able to with our fingers and with a long screwdriver just sort of uh, feel feed the uh, uh, gasket up into the the valve cover uh, starting with the rear first and then tilted the cover up at the front a bit and do the same thing again and just um, feel for it and get it all in there. So now if you have a look you can see the, uh, the gasket is consistently in all the way around. Uh, the front exactly the same. So yeah we did remove the horns just uh, or sorry the horn on this side to give a bit more room. And you can see here's the uh, Crankcase ventilation hose that removed that allows a lot more space going up here. So now uh, we'll just put in the uh, four eight millimeter bolts and button her up, put everything back the way it was, and then fire it up. Okay, when you're tightening down your valve cover to sort of help prevent leaks, uh, do it in a tighten it up in a cross hatch pattern. So I've read a couple. Horror stories with people either having cross-threaded or breaking the bolts off in the head, so nobody needs that kind of grief, so just take your, your time and take a break now and again and breathe. Breathe. It can be frustrating at times. I think the factory torque is 11 newton meters, which I think is around 8 pounds. So not much. So just like I say, just be go easy on them. You'll feel when they come when they become tight, it seems. They will stop. You'll feel them. They don't want to go any further, so don't force them. Just a little, little snugness. All right. Okay. Get the plugs back in to prevent any issues with not having plugs. It's a good time if you want to check the gap on the plugs. Um, you can check the gap or replace them. I think I'll wait until our next uh, service.
spark plug. Let's make sure there's no debris or dirt in there. Make sure it's fully seated. Again, it's 12, maybe 12 or 12 millimeter. So now we'll put back the ABS pump. And all we have left is such Get the tank back on and installed. So here's our tank, connections all ready to go back in. This is the uh, rearward uh, quick release, and this is the front one. So I'm assuming the reason why there's why I'm not going to put this one on there right now is wait until we get it on there and then attach this at the back first and then reach up front and do this one. So let's, uh, let's see how she moves. Electric okay. mm. you can just Stick that in there now. We'll soon see. I guess if it doesn't work, we'll drop it out. But that's the front connections. Now, lower it down so that it goes into the tank grommets. Now, lift the back and carry on. Figure out a plan of attack here. There we go, that went in. Now the two drain lines or vacuum lines, they kind of tell you where they want to go. One more to go. Get that line right on there. Feel for it, it's all the way up. Okay, that's our two 10 millimeter bolts to secure the tank. Good and good. Start up and
one thing I would say is uh, to ensure uh, number one, the uh, the valve job, valve job, valve adjustment uh, must be done on a dead cold engine. So uh, do it in the morning or whatever, but uh, have at least uh, probably eight hours between riding it and the time you do the uh, valve adjustment. Um, now what I'm going to do, of course, is keep an eye open for leaks on the valve cover in case uh, the, uh, the my sealing job wasn't so good. But uh, and. Uh, Keep an eye on these bolts as well. Maybe check the tension on them uh, afterwards and just see how they go. But yeah, there you have it. That's a uh, minor valve adjustment or a valve adjustment on the Royal Enfield Continental 650. Uh, once again, thanks again for uh, watching, liking, subscribing uh, to Lost Together Forever. We really appreciate it. Uh, love seeing your views and uh, uh, your comments and that to try and answer every comment that... Uh, that you make and any questions you have feel free to ask and uh, I'll give you an honest straightforward answer uh, any other questions like I say just uh, leave them in the comments section and we will get back to you so uh, once again thanks for watching Lost Together Forever ciao